What up guys? Crazy overdue for a video. I think I'm going to make it my 2015 resolution to make more videos on YouTube and get a selfie stick. How's that for an opening joke to the video? Nothing too crazy going on today, but I'm going to spend this time to talk about 10 kind of technical terms that I think are really good to know. Alright, just to get started, let's list off all 10. MBPS, Client, Server, Proxy, API, SDK, Cache, Linux, Compiling, Embedded Devices, and RTFM. The first term is MBPS and it stands for megabits per second. What this is, is a data transfer rate and intuitively it's just measuring how fast data flows. You probably hear this term used a lot by Verizon and AT&T bragging about how fast their download or upload speeds are. If you're used to megabytes, one really important thing to remember is that when they give you this number, always make sure to divide it by 8. If Verizon tells you that you can download at 16 Mbps, that means you should be able to download at 2 megabytes a second, even though you probably still can't. Mbps as a data transfer rate isn't particular only to cell phone data. You can copy a movie from your thumb drive to a computer and you can also potentially measure that in Mbps if you wanted to. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is this thing called client-server model and it's an extremely, extremely general concept in engineering and life. A client is anyone that makes any sort of request and the server is anyone who responds to that request. When you go into your browser and you go into google.com, you search for the lyrics to your favorite song, the Star Spangled Banner, and you make a request as a user. You are a client. The really big and powerful Google computers sitting out in space are acting like a server and they're gonna respond to you once you hit enter on that search. I think it's really good if you just think of client and server in these really, really simple terms. You go to a restaurant, you're a client, and the waiter is a server. The next term that I wanted to introduce that fits right along with client-server is this thing called a proxy. All a proxy is, is someone else that makes a request on behalf of you. Real life example, you and your friend Bob go to a restaurant to order some steaks, but you're crazy, crazy hungover. You can't really talk, so you just have Bob order a steak for you. Bob is your proxy. And networking proxies are usually used for security and optimized performance. In real life, you can use a proxy if you're a scaredy cat, you know? The next term that is really common and is good to know is an API, which stands for Application Programmer Interface. My definition of an API is anything that allows two pieces of software to talk to each other. They usually have a basic theme to them. One example that is good, I think, would be the Google Maps API. You could use it to get your location, get the coordinates of your favorite restaurant, get directions to your mom's house, or do some spying. Another really important thing to remember is that APIs are always a software to software type of interaction. One of my friends asked me if when they open up their web browser or their computer, are they using any APIs when they're accessing the websites? When you're just sitting at home by yourself, surfing the internet, you might access a website, but you're not directly using any APIs as a user. That website might be using APIs to do a lot of magical things to give you really nice services, but you as a user aren't using them directly. Okay, now the next term is an SDK, and now that you understand what an API is, SDK is really easy to understand. SDK stands for Software Development Kit, and all it is is a huge collection of APIs. APIs usually have a pretty narrow and distinct theme to each one, whereas an SDK is usually very general purpose. One example is if you want to build an Android app, you need to use the Android SDK to get that done. Based on whatever application you decide to build for Android, you're going to use a small subset of APIs under the big umbrella SDK that is going to make your app happen. Let's just wrap up SDK real quick. Two things you have to know, extremely general purpose and 
created from a large set of APIs. Okay, the next term I want to introduce is a cache, also pronounced cache, cache. A cache is literally just a quicker, more efficient way to access something else. My sofa full of my clothes is a cache for my closet. My pantry in the kitchen is also a cache for the grocery store. The programs that are currently running on my computer are a cache for all the big files that I've saved on my hard drive. All the big files that I've saved on my hard drive is a cache for all the crazy stuff I've saved up on the cloud. So hopefully you got the basic gist of the cache based on those analogies. If you have any other questions, watch my memory hierarchy video for some more details on that. Next term I want to introduce is Linux. Linux is an open source operating system. Open source meaning that it's completely free to anyone and everyone can contribute to it. And I can't really talk about operating systems right now because I don't have enough time. Pretty much anything besides your personal computer is probably running Linux. 15 second history lesson. Back in the day, there was this operating system called Unix with a U that was extremely, extremely exclusive. Linux was originally inspired by Unix with the sole purpose of being free. So one of the reasons why Linux is so good and so widespread is really because it's open source and so many people can use it and change it. I, I definitely didn't do Linux enough justice in here, so maybe I'll make a video on that later. We're on the eighth term, and this is the concept of compiling code. So when software engineers write code on their computers, they use a variety of different languages to create these programs. The thing you have to remember about these programming languages is that they're not designed to be read by computers. They are designed to be read by humans, even though they can look a little messy, humans are supposed to read that stuff. The act of transforming what you type into the computer into those ones and zeros, I'm going to group that all into this umbrella term of compiling. These days compiling is so powerful, a lot of the times developers aren't even aware when it's happening, but at some point in time, it has to happen. Alright guys, almost done. This is the second to last thing I want to talk about, and hopefully you haven't fallen asleep yet. My definition of an embedded device is any kind of electronics that's kind of embedded or inside something else. All those buttons you press on your microwave, setting the timer, setting it to frozen, setting it to nuke, those are all handled by an embedded device. You should just think small, inside something, and with a specific purpose. So your laptop isn't really an embedded device, but your cool Nest thermostat that you bought that's a pretty cool embedded device. Okay, last term, and it's my favorite. The last term is RTFM. Usually you hear this when you ask someone a question too many times and they tell you to RTFM. When you're picking up something new for the first time, I think it's always better to at least read the manual a little bit before you really go and ask your friend about it. It's never good to ask too many questions too quickly without doing a little bit of homework. If someone asks you a question and you know they didn't read the manual, you don't have to be nice about it. Just tell them to RTFM and life's going to be a lot better. I think you know what it stands for, but I'm not going to say it. It's too scary. <sighs> okay, that's it. That was the last term and now we're at the end of the video. Um, I'm still going to try to make a lot of videos in 2015. I'm going to buy my selfie stick. So if you like this video, please, you know, give me a like or drop me a comment. If anything, you can... Uh, private message me with any questions and hope you enjoyed it, alright? Take it easy.